Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, I took a little bit of a break there. Uh, just took some time to enjoy the desert here at my quiet spot for a few days. We had a full four days without a storm. Hey, it's been a while since we've had that many days without uh, rain. Uh, anyway, today I'm uh, back on the little radio, the two SDX again. Um, yeah, I know there's been quite a few of these here, but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm documenting my experience with the new radio. Uh, so I'm still occasionally getting, very occasionally, getting a reboot. I'll, uh, if I rotate the, the VFO at just the right speed, I got a slight chance that it's going to go pop, the screen's going to go garbage, and it's going to reboot. Uh, so in troubleshooting that, I decided to uh, do a firmware uh, update, or maybe just a reload if I've got the current firmware. Um, and I thought, well, I'll be doing this under Linux. I didn't find any videos uh, talking about how to do the firmware update on the true SDX under Linux. So I thought, well, I'll do a walkthrough. Maybe it'll help somebody else out. So let's go to the computer. We'll download the new firmware and the software that we're going to use to update this, and we'll do the update. Okay, so first thing we need to do is download the firmware. Now, if we go to uh, DL2MAN's homepage, Manuel, the... Uh, hardware designer of the True SDX. Uh, we find all his information on it. It's a nicely done page, lots of information here, definitely worth uh, spending some time on. And I'll put a link in the description, but it's simply uh, dl2man.de. All right, scrolling down the page, we find a link here to the firmware. We click that link, and this is where we download our firmware. Now, in order to download it, you need to input the serial number of your radio and your call sign, which is optional. Now, what this will do is um, it, it, he's probably got a script that modifies a few bytes of the uh, firmware file to put your call sign in so it's displayed when the radio boots up. And then we simply hit download and it will pull down a hex file, which is, uh, if, uh, if I'm reading that correctly, that is a byte-for-byte -byte image of the data that goes into the uh, ROM in the microcontroller in the true SDX. Unlike other uh, ATmega projects, which are usually using the Arduino IDE, this requires a different piece of software to install the firmware in your uh, radio. And uh, he has a link right here. If you're running Windows, you need to install this driver for the CH340 uh, USB serial interface chip that's being used in the radio. If you're running Linux, you don't have to bother with that. It's um, already part of the kernel, and it'll be recognized when you plug it in. But let's go look at this AVR Dudas software. So this is the page for AVR Dudas. And uh, if we look at it, uh, it has information about the software, uh, download links, and information on how to run it, including Linux and Mac OS. Hey, look at that. can be run using Mono. Excellent. All right. So, step one, downloading the program. We want the portable version. We don't want this setup file. This setup file is for Windows, uh, and it would install the software under Windows. We want the portable version, which is just the program itself, and we will in, then run it uh, using Mono under Linux. So, we click that to download it, and we will get an archive that extracts to this. And these are all the bits and pieces that go with the program the executable, and so on. So uh, after we download that file and extract it into a folder, we're going to open a terminal. And uh, most desktops, you can just do a Control-Alt-T to open a terminal. Um, you can also find it under your menu. So I've got a terminal window open here. Now, what do I need to do? Well, let's go back here to the web page. And uh, we'll look at these instructions for installing under Ubuntu. Now, this is Ubuntu 18.04, which is quite old. So the first thing we need to do is install 
uh, mono. So we'll copy this line, su do do, super user do, means run it as the uh, administrator or root account. apt get install live mono system windows. Uh, da -da 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 you can use mono complete for a full install. This is the minimum, so we will go with that. This is the minimum, so I will copy this line. I will go back to my terminal, shift control V to paste it in. It's going to ask for my password because we are doing sudo, which is uh, telling the system to run this as root so it can install things into the system. And it's telling me that I've already got these because, yeah, I already did this. <clears throat> but um, that will install the framework, Mono Framework, which allows you to run .NET software. And, uh, oh, a few extras here, okay. AVR, dude. Back to the terminal. No, oh, I didn't install this before. Oh. All right, so we've installed the things they say we need to install. And now we should be able to run the program using the mono uh, command to run it. So I will go back to my terminal. And uh, I need to be in the same directory as the program I downloaded. So I'll type cd space, and I'll show you a trick. This works on the Mate desktop. Uh, probably works on others. But uh, here's the folder where I've got the program. And this is the path to the folder. If I take this icon here, which is the actual folder name itself, and I drag it over to the terminal, you can see that it inserted the full path. So I can just enter, and now I'm in that directory. Yep, see, all the same stuff. So we should be able to run the program with mono. Uh, A-V-R-D-U-D-E-S-S dot E-X-E. And there it is. Look at that. It ran. How about that? All right. So I need to in plug in my SDX. Let me get another camera pointed at it here so you can watch its display. All right. I'm going to plug in the radio to the computer. Plugging in the USB port now. And there you can see it powered up. And we'll go back to the web page. And we'll look at his instructions. Uh, okay, well, this is Windows. We have to identify the COM port. Well, I, I know what the radio is connect connected to under Linux. So let's see here. Uh, COM port, COM port, COM port. Where's the COM port? Port. Oh, okay. Well, look at that. So this, being I'm under Linux, instead of showing COM numbers like you would with Windows, it's actually showing the path to the serial devices. And the radio should be... Dev TTY USB 0. That's the radio right there. Uh, baud rate 115 200. Programmer Arduino MCU AT Mega 328P. I've already set that. That's good. We're set to the right serial port, the right baud rate. Um, we just need to select our hex file. So here is the hex file that I downloaded. Uh, yeah, you might notice I'm downloading the beta. Manuel wanted me to, to run the beta and have a look at it, so I'll, I'll just select that. Okay, so we got the file. Format auto writing only. Right, and, and I think we just hit go, don't we? Let's go back to the web page. Oh, then hit the program button. And 
And after the uh, successful messages, you should see that. Okay, all right. let's go back here and do that. All right, program. The radio went quiet. The display stopped updating. It shows that it's writing. There's the reboot. It's got my call sign. It came back up with the uh, proper information on the display. So it looks like we were successful. How about that? So that's pretty easy. Um, pretty straightforward. The instructions on the web page worked just fine. We got no errors. It wrote to the, to the device. Yeah, it looks a little bit different. seems to work. So I guess we were successful. All right. So there you go. Those of you running Linux with a true SDX, I hope you found that uh, useful and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.